Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone today? Good. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Never. Pardon me. I thought she said. So. I thought maybe I wasn't coming through on the microphone or something. But I think we're good. Now uh, there was no ringing of the bell this morning because we couldn't find the key to unlock the office where the bell is. So, <laughs> ding ding, welcome. <laughs> Couple of announcements, bunch of announcements. Um, first off, uh, if anyone's interested, we now have, because I've received the request a couple times this summer from visitors, gluten-free wafers. So if you have a gluten issue and you need a gluten-free wafer, let me know and we can arrange that. I have them up here. Um, Let's see, voters meeting today, immediately following the service. Hopefully it's a short one. Uh, the topic of discussion will be creating a uh, paid position for treasurer. So uh, you can join us for that. And uh, like I say, hopefully we'll be in and out and then that will be followed with Bible study, which is today we were looking at uh, John, the gospel writer, epistle writer, revelation writer. So you can join us for that. And then we have Monday morning Bible study tomorrow. And I think that's it. Prayers. Jerry Gursky, Judith Wismuth, Harold Larson, Russell Joyner, Andrew Ruthberg, Tyler Hildebrandt, Terry Haas, Steve Bauer, and today we are adding Diane Beiersdorf to the prayer list. Um, Diane asked me to give you a little update on why she's on the prayer list. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Diane had her um, annual mammogram and it came back that Diane has uh, stage three breast cancer. So Diane is uh, going into treatment for that. She starts chemotherapy this coming week and that's gonna be for a while. So while she's doing that, um, of course, she's supposed to stay away from people because it does a job on your immune system. So we won't be seeing her for a little while, but we'll certainly be in communications with her. The one thing Diane did say is that, you know, she wanted you all to know, but she said, please don't everybody call me at once. <laughs> so kind of space out your calls, coordinate that amongst yourselves, okay? And we will keep Diane in our prayers. Um, I think that's all I have. Does anyone else have anything? All right. Well, as we gather today, we hear of Jesus healing Bartimaeus, a blind man. Jesus had healed another blind man in the town of Bethsaida. There, the first healing touch of Jesus didn't seem to work completely. Strangely, the man's sight was only partially restored. What was missing? It took a second touch to restore his sight fully. With Bartimaeus, there was no second touch of Jesus. Actually, there wasn't even a first touch at all, only his word, go your way. Your faith has made you well. The metaphor of physical blindness speaks of the spiritual blindness that we, with the first disciples, need to confront, namely sin, our separation and alienation from God. Jesus spoke three times between these two healings of his ultimate act and victory over death. True faith sees our ultimate healing only through the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Faith follows after Jesus through the cross. We begin with our opening hymn, Today Your Mercy Calls Us.
Please rise. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Let us confess our greatest need to God, our merciful Father. Merciful God, we confess that we are in the darkness of the fallen world by our own sin. Our failure to keep your holy commandments in our thoughts, words, and deeds, as well as the good we have failed to do. Deliver us from the darkness of death by the light of your son's saving death on the cross and the power of his resurrection. Speak now your divine word of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Amen. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, go your way. Your faith has made you well. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and hear us. Call us to yourself today and grant us healing, hope, life, and salvation. Grant us also the strength of faith to take up our cross and follow you, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Jeremiah, and we hear how the Lord will turn mourning to joy. Thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, the pregnant woman and she who is in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come. And with pleas for mercy, I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from Hebrews chapter 7, and it speaks of Jesus, our high priest forever. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the utmost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did not this, he did this once for all when he offered himself up. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for our verse and gospel. Alleluia. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you. They came to Jericho, and as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. 
And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Son, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our hymn of the day. Come, let us join our cheerful songs. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God, our Father, and from Jesus Christ, his Son, our Savior. Amen. Blindness and sight. That's what our gospel story is about today. In this wonderful miracle of Jesus healing Bartimaeus, we learn something of what it means to journey out of darkness and blindness into light and the gift of seeing. Have you ever wondered what it's like to live as a physically or spiritually blind person? Have you, have you ever thought about the difference it could make if you were blind and then suddenly Jesus came along and gave you the gift of sight? Come along and journey with Jesus today as we try to find out more. Now, Mark begins by telling us that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. It's the season of the Passover. Jesus has just arrived in Jericho, and Jericho was about 15 miles northeast of Jerusalem. He's traveling through town. Crowds are lining the streets. Most likely, some of them were there to welcome Jesus. There were also others that were there to criticize him and question him, find some reason to do away with him. It was customary at that time for, for rabbis to have a following. And as they would travel, the rabbi he would teach, and that's exactly what Jesus is doing today. He's traveling from Jericho to Jerusalem, and he's teaching as he heads towards the Passover. 
And as they're about to leave Jericho, lo and behold, there's, there's one heckler in the crowd. This one was perhaps different than many of them, though, since he was a blind beggar. Mark tells us his name was Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus. And it's a bit of a word play because, like I say, Aramaic, the prefix bar means son of. So his name actually tells us who his father was, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. Now, Mark doesn't make it clear whether or not Bartimaeus was born blind, although he hints at him perhaps having sight earlier in his life. In verse 51, Bartimaeus makes the following request of Jesus. He says, let me see again. And in verse 52, Mark says, he regained his sight. These two words, again and regained, kind of infer that at an earlier time, Bartimaeus could probably see. At any rate, to be a blind person in first century Israel was no fun. No fun whatsoever. As Mark tells us, Bartimaeus was a beggar. He was a desperate man. He had no secure means of making a living. Condemned to a life on the streets of Jericho begging. And along with that was likely a lot of scorn and derision from the general public. Lots of judgment. Since in those days, most people, religious people, believed that illness was associated with sinfulness. If you were sick, it was because you were sinning. Or perhaps not even you, it could have been your parents or even your grandparents. Because if you were sick or blind or crippled, it wasn't just the natural train of things. It was the fact that you or someone close to you was a sinner. And God was punishing you. So... To be blind like Bartimaeus meant to live as an outcast, to live in poverty. And in, in spite of all the stigma attached to the life as a blind beggar, Bartimaeus was very persistent. He was determined. He was a, a desperate heckler that day as Jesus walked by him. We can hear it both in the tone of his voice and the words he speaks, Mark says he shouted at first and then later cried out even more loudly. In that cry were all of Bartimaeus' future hopes and dreams. His whole life and destiny depended upon getting Jesus to hear him. He had heard of Jesus' reputation. He was overjoyed that he could finally meet the Messiah. So he shouts at the top of his lungs, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. However, there were those in the crowd ready to shout back abusive words to Bartimaeus. Can you hear him saying it? How dare you, blind heckler? Leave Jesus alone. Shut your mouth, you blind beggar. We'll throw you to the wild beasts. Get out of there. Away with you, you good-for-nothing sinner. In spite of all the judgment and condemnation, in spite of all the loneliness and pain because of status, in spite of his own inner struggles at self-worth, Bartimaeus is determined not to be silent at this time. And he cries out with all the energy he can muster, Son of David, have mercy on me. 
It's rather telling that Bartimaeus, even though he is blind and a beggar, addresses Jesus as son of David. You know what's special about the title, son of David? It means Messiah. Could have been the way, reason some of the people were telling him to shut up because they didn't want to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. But by saying son of David, Bartimaeus, even though he's a blind beggar, is recognizing through his spiritual insight that Jesus is the Messiah. He's more religious, more spiritual, more spiritually clean than those religious folks who judged and condemned and ridiculed him. He may have remembered that wonderful passage from Isaiah describing the Messiah's work. It says, I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeons, from the prisons, those who sit in darkness. Bartimaeus' blindness felt like one dark prison. He was trapped, and he could not, no matter how hard he tried, escape from this trap. He needed Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, to do this. Only the Messiah could heal his blindness. Only the Messiah could release him from his dark prison, and he knew it. Thus his loud plea. Here's the question of the day. What sort of blindness, what sort of dark prisons trap us? What blindness do we need Jesus to heal of us? Our plea, our prayer, our desperate desire, our words of request to Jesus may be the same as Bartimaeus's. As we come to this altar today for healing, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Whatever blindness may be keeping us trapped in a dark prison, only Jesus can heal us. Bartimaeus trusted that was true. Do we? As the story continues, in verse 49, everything changes. Jesus stops in his tracks, and he instructs someone to call him here. Those who a moment ago turned away, walked by, and ignored that blind beggar now actually listen to Jesus, and they obey him. And they approach Bartimaeus and offer words of acceptance, invitation, and encouragement. They say, take heart, get up, he's calling you. The one who spoke these words, maybe it was one of Jesus' disciples, who had witnessed Jesus healing miracles before, and now he's anticipating what Jesus is going to do, and then he's figuring it's probably going to be something pretty wonderful for this blind beggar. I wondered, I wonder too if there's not a bit of play of words here. Perhaps the words, he's calling you, refer to a, a double call. The immediate call into Jesus' presence right here, right now, as well as the call to a new life. A life of depression discipleship, a life of following Jesus into a new future. At any rate, a Bartimaeus responds. He, he throws off his cloak, possibly so that he'd have nothing to, to trip on and prevent him from reaching Jesus. And after he throws off his cloak, he jumps up and enthusiastically comes to Jesus. You know, it's possible that that 
thrown off cloak could perhaps be a symbol of, of leaving behind his life as a beggar. As he moves into the future of not only physical, but also spiritual sight by following Jesus. Then comes that wonderful encounter. Jesus asks Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? The question may function to highlight the message that Jesus never forces himself or his will on anyone. He gives everyone the opportunity to freely, without coercion, respond to him. At any rate, Bartimaeus says, my teacher, let me see again. The word my indicates Bartimaeus' willing to follow, willingness to follow Jesus as a disciple. Jesus responds by saying, go, your faith has made you well. Point of interest here. If you happen to have an ESV Bible, which is what we use, it says, go, your faith has made you well. If you happen to have an old NIV Bible, it would say, go, your faith has made you well. If you happen to have a King James, or better yet, if you can read Greek, the statement actually says, go, your faith has saved you. Jesus, however, doesn't mean faith in faith, but faith in Jesus. Faith in the power to heal him. Faith is complete trust in Jesus. In spite of all the barriers that people put in place to prevent Bartimaeus from coming to Jesus, Bartimaeus had faith. Mark concludes the story by telling us that his sight was regained and he followed Jesus as a disciple on the way. On the way to Jerusalem where Jesus would suffer and die on the cross and three days later be raised from the dead. So today, this very day, when, when you come forward to receive the Lord's body and blood, when you come forward to receive healing, Jesus asks you, what do you want me to do for you? It's an invitation. It's an invitation to each one of us to come and receive Christ's healing in our lives whether our healing be physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual. And like Bartimaeus, in response, we follow him on the way to his suffering, death, and resurrection. His way of life, his way of healing, and his way of salvation for all of us. For all people, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you would. Please rise and join with me as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the prayer of the church. Gracious and merciful God, we give you thanks that you have restored our spiritual sight in the salvation you have given the whole world through the blessed and glorious death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Help us to fix our eyes continually upon him as he comes to us here in the preaching of your holy word and the faithful administration of your holy sacraments. Enable us to follow him in the way that leads to the eternal vision of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide and defend your whole church. Bless Matthew, our synodical president, Duane, our district president. Grant wisdom and grace to all pastors and send the light of your truth into all the earth that many may come to receive your grace and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear. Today, we thank you especially for Lutheran Braille workers who serve those with vision impairments with religious and spiritual materials. Bless the many volunteers in this service to blind and low vision people worldwide. Lord, in your mercy, hear. Preserve our nation in justice and honor that we lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear the offices of government in our land. Help them to serve all people according to your holy will. Guard and protect all who serve in the armed forces of our country. Grant them faithfulness and success in their service and grant that their homecomings be joyful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, control all who are in sorrow. Comfort all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or adversity. Especially this day, we pray for Sherry, for Judith, for Harold, for Russell, for Andrew, for Tyler, for Terry, for Steve, and for Diane, as well as all of those on our extended prayer list and those we name now in our hearts. Be with those also who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on all whom death draws near. Sustain and bless all who care for those that suffer. Lord, in your mercy. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is where we would normally have the offering. One of these days soon, we're going to bring it back. But in the meantime, there's a basket in the back. You can drop your offering back there. You can also drop it in the church mailbox anytime. You can mail it to us. Or if you're technically inclined, you can donate using the church app. And as always, thank you for your stewardship. Now, if you would, please rise as we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who opens both blind eyes and hearts to see and believe in the wondrous salvation he came to bring by means of his cross and resurrection. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of 
Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to the Lord, truly blessed is he who Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. By his coming, he proclaimed good news to the poor, liberty to the captives, and recovering sight to the blind, even to such as blind Bartimaeus, and even to such as we who call upon you here and now. By your powerful word, draw us to yourself. Grant that we who partake in your holy body and blood see you more clearly and be strengthened to deny ourselves, bear our own crosses, and follow you. Hear us as we pray as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given up for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. Oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy may be seated. Um, let's see. Communion. That's what we're doing now. And uh, we're back to using individual and common cup at the same time. It got a little confusing having the common cuppers wait. So we actually are coming around with both now. So you have the option, whichever one. If you don't want the individual cup, just wave it by and you'll Get the common cup. All right. Um, I think that's all. With that being said, take it away, Tiffany. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given unto death for you. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in the true faith from now until life everlasting. Go forth in his peace and joy. Amen.
take a drink with the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take a drink with the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you from all the plague and everlasting. Depart in peace and joy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. you and keep you in the power of your baptism. Take and eat. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for you. Give him the body of Christ, given unto death for you. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you in the power of your baptism. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in the true faith from now until life everlasting. Go forth in his peace and joy. Amen. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in the true faith from now until life everlasting. Go forth in his peace and joy. Amen. Still on.
If you would, please rise as we continue with the post-communion Thanksgiving. Let us pray. O God, our Father, having received the forgiveness, light, and salvation won by your Son's sacrifice on the cross in this most holy sacrament, we pray you to strengthen us that we faithfully follow the Son in the true vision of faith in your never-failing love. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and to give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. Thank you. 